Now we can generate our solution to this problem. Now we need to ask ourselves what type of problem we're solving. We've already assumed steady state, so it seems pretty obvious that we will be solving a steady state problem. We're also told that the outer surface of the brain is held at a temperature of 30 degrees Celsius. And because there's this outer surface is held at 30 degrees Celsius, there's a temperature gradient between the inside of the brain and the surface that is causing heat to be lost. So we know we're dealing with some type of conduction problem. Now we can use our steady state flowchart to guide us through the rest of this problem. First we had to determine whether or not heat is being generated. So in the problem we're specifically told that the brain is experiencing some type of metabolic heat generation. So we can assume that there is heat generation and we can rule out this no heat generation branch. So we're left with two possible ways to solve this problem. We're left with this from scratch approach or the solutions that are given in the textbook. So which approach do we use? Do we use this from scratch approach or this solutions approach? Unfortunately, this problem isn't one of the standard geometries and boundary conditions given in the textbook, so we're going to have to use a from scratch approach to solve the rest of the problem. Now we need to determine what general equation and geometry we need to use to solve this problem. We're told to represent the brain as a hemisphere, so the sphere equation, the sphere general equation, seems like the obvious choice. So now we can get rid of some terms in our equation. So because we're at steady state, this time term drops to zero. Next we need to choose our boundary conditions. As our schematic indicates, there's no heat flow through the bottom surface of the brain which includes our point of origin or at r equals zero. So we can write the flux at a radius of zero is simply equal to zero as one of our boundary conditions. We're also told that the temperature at the outer surface of the brain, this surface here, is held at 30 degrees Celsius which is also equal to 303 Kelvin. So let's talk about our heat generation term Q. Now Q is composed of the heat generation due to the metabolism and the heat generation due to blood flow. So the problem asks us to find the heat generation due to blood flow first. So to find the heat generation due to blood flow, which is just, we represent as QBF, we can refer to our bioheat transfer equation and find the term in there that accounts for convection due to blood flow. And this term is just the density of the blood times the specific heat of the blood times the, the blood flow rate per volume of tissue times the arterial temperature minus T. So this equation will give us the heat generation due to blood flow.